Luckily, not every diner day is a complete disaster. Sometimes everything just works. My longtime friend and customer wanted to break a thousand horsepower with his twin turbo LS Fairmont on a Holly HP ECU, and things went pretty much perfectly until they didn't. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how smooth a dyno session can go and how a single incorrect part kept us from making even more power. Good news is all of our inputs and outputs and sensors and all of that stuff is all set up. The bad news is the fuel timing tables were, they just had to be redone uh, from scratch. And this is a new computer, first car doing it. And I haven't switched any of my old files over or anything. So we're gonna have to do this one uh, legitimately from scratch. It's some bullshit. Haven't even started it yet. And so even though I used his base file with all the stuff set up, I still have gone through and modified basically everything. Messing with the ISC parked position right now. All right, let's see if it'll run. First try? That's actually pretty good. I'm going to, oh, this is closed loop completely turned off. I don't use closed loop during warm up. And I'm gonna change my target fueling. Not that I need to, because I'm not actually using it for anything. I just like them to match as close as possible. Being twin turbo with the exhaust on each side sounds a little bit weird. Should we put it on the dyno? Yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and put it on the dyno. Let's go. The part throttle fueling's been fighting me a little bit, but I think it got it pretty close now. If you want a deep dive on how to use your Holly EFI system, check out the link in the description. It's a brand new website with way more information than ever before. I keep tinkering with it, but I think it's time to start doing some full throttle runs. Check it out, it's even got power steering. Let's try and make our first full throttle run. I got my targets real fat and it doesn't have any timing in it. The throttle body on this thing is like super stiff. You gotta like really hammer down on it to get it to go. All the boost control stuff's turned off. This thing vibrates like crazy. 400, let's see what the boost was. About six PSI. And fueling was okay until about, I don't know, 5,500. I didn't rev it all the way out. So I'll make some tweaks and we'll try it again. Before we go too much further, I want to make sure the secondary fuel pump is working. So I'm going to test that real quick. Oh yeah, it's coming on. 400 so far seems a little low. I ain't going to lie, bro. Sometimes like late nights I just cry. May have just started with the timing way too low so a little timing some fuel tweaks. Try again. Oh yeah picked up a hundred so far so that's back on track. More RPM than timing but uh, still have only gone to about 6,000. Uh, the more I rev it, the more fuel it needs, so it's still kind of far out on fuel. So is this a street car? Is it a race car? I don't think anybody really knows, but actually looking at the monitor right now, I just realized this thing doesn't have a cage in it. Last run it made 550, no changes in timing, basically just revved it out a little higher. Above 6,000 we still need some fuel, which is a good sign. And then hopefully it's about time, probably one, maybe two more runs, and then it's time to turn the air compressor on. That's the power at like six pounds and essentially the lowest we can get the power to go. 
So since this is just a streetcar, I don't want to keep it packed with ice the whole time. It takes actually nice and cool. And what's actually kind of cool, it's got an air to water intercooler on it. I don't know if you can see. Uh, but it actually has a heat exchanger for the intercooler, so that's going to help tremendously. That's the coolest part of the whole car. Compressor's kicking on, it's nice and loud. And I'm targeting 10 pounds on the controller. So I don't know if there's some magic sequence of buttons and crap I gotta push for it to work, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Scrolling through, got like 1%. Right here we get a little bit of a rich spot, uh, which is kind of weird. Oh yeah, I got this is a little higher. So we gotta touch that up. Minus one, minus two, minus one, zero, minus one, minus two. So other than this little spot right here, I'm perfectly happy with all of that. Voltage looks good. Air feels nice and safe. And uh, fuel pressure is right on the money too. So I think uh, we're in good shape. We're gonna give engine bay and everything at once over make sure nothing fell the hell off and do we want to play with timing I might give it another five pounds of dumb pressure uh, and then maybe we'll tinker with timing a little bit made another run there's been like 50 people that have come by to talk today so uh kind of forgot to record it may like 740 some basically 750 and i'm all screwed up from stopping to talk 80 times so I'm gonna throw five pounds of, yeah, we're gonna throw five more pounds of dome pressure at it and see if we can do this uninterrupted this time. All right, I'm actually recording this time, so that's helpful. Uh. Fueling goes a touch rich as the converter flashes. I'm not going to try and chase that at the moment, but past that, everything is rock solid. Uh, this boost controller is kind of uh, spikes. Uh, it kind of like spikes and then drops back down. Not totally untypical, but I don't really have uh, any control over that. In our air temp with just the heat exchanger and no ice, we're up at about 130 degrees. So I don't suspect he's really going to be running it at these boost levels on the street. It's just going to do a burnout anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some ice in it. Yeah, I don't really want to put any more timing in uh, with how high the air temp is. So yeah, we'll see. We'll try some ice, some timing, and I'd like to get a little bit higher at this boost level power wise. <laughs> the way the drain is set up for this, I'm going to get 100% of this water on the floor. Ah, it's everywhere. Needs a bigger hose. That drains super slow. You can fit like 14 dead bodies in this trunk. That's slow that's coming out. This is probably going to take like 20 minutes. While I'm waiting, put some plugs. That is going to focus on this. Nice and soft.
the million dollar question is usually what's the next move? More boost or more timing? We picked up like 50, so we're gonna put some more timing in this. Other than the brief boost spike, the fueling is absolutely perfect. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 minus one. The target air fuel ratio is pretty rich too. Um, yeah, we'll try a little bit more timing on this one. So a little bit of change of plans. I actually pulled a decent chunk of timing out of it down low, especially around where that boost spike is. Pulled some timing out everywhere, but then brought some timing back in, changed the shape of the timing curve a little bit. Uh, so I think overall we're probably down like one degree from where we were peak. And uh, I went up five PSI on dome pressure. So we're gonna try this and see where we're at. tune a car and remember to turn off the boost cut. Up to this point, things were right on track. You might have been able to sense my, hmm, something seems a little bit off. Turns out the converter that was used in this build was one of those, I don't know, I think it was like something that a friend had laying around. Basically, long story short, it wasn't spec for this combination at all. It was just like one of those, let's put this in the car to get it up and running type of things. And long story short, it just wasn't up to the task of what we were asking it to do. As the boost went up, you could hear that the engine was audibly running happier and making significantly more power. However, the dyno was not showing that as it was just kind of pushing through the converter. He has since had a converter spec for the car. I think it'd be pretty interesting to put the car back on the dyno exactly as is with the new converter and just see how much more power the car is actually making as it sits. Okay, so it picked up a decent chunk of power for not much boost. I don't know if it's my brain messing with me or what but it sounded significantly better i hate these stupid boost spikes they always come like rpm wise at the worst possible spot there's nothing i can do about it i'm running this significantly richer than i normally do so i think i don't know the timing is about kind of where i want it well, we're on the dyno let's see so i prefer to make power with boost rather than timing but at the same time on this ls stuff i if you can help it, I try not to have to want to run a thousand pounds of boost. So we'll try a little bit of timing. I'm going to check the ice and depending on what that does, well, even if it picks up power, I doubt I'll put any more in there, but let's see. This is more of like a verification to make sure the timing is where it actually wants to be. put timing in it it picked up so we know we're safe but it's not enough to justify keeping it there so we're gonna pull it back out this is a full-blown full-time race car maybe that might be different but the way this car is gonna get used that makes me the most comfortable no changes other than adding some more dome pressure suck at everything whole damn computer is just being a pile of trash now which generally means it's time for a good old windows update do that and try it again i hate everything seemed like a good opportunity to pull some more plugs what's interesting with this ls stuff is i feel like the head gasket will completely fall off before the plug ever really shows signs of being unhappy like this plug right here like you could easily put another four degrees of timing in this if it wasn't uh concern of you know head gasket either way that looks happy as can be so 
not too much to complain about there. Software update fixed the computer problem. So a little bit more dumb pressure. And hopefully everything goes well. Talking on the phone. Whoa, did you just answer in half of a ring? <laughs> so I've probably tuned 150 cars for you over the years, but this one legitimately hasn't needed a wrench, uh, a paper towel, nothing. It's been uh, the, your, your best work by a long shot. Oh, uh, you know, I tried hard on this one. Yeah, it shows. I actually, this thing's awesome. Hopefully you hang on to this one for a little while. Uh, so, um, basically, really only good news. Uh, it's, maybe I wish it was making a hundred more horsepower. Uh, so it's at a thousand and forty one. That is awesome, man. That's, that's good news because the goal was a thousand it had to touch. I, I mean, this thing is running flawless and it's hot and humid and nasty. Like I would be willing to bet if you put it on the dyno after the sun goes down, it'd probably pick up a hundred. At least hitting the, the four digit, four digits has made my day. It's like, oh man, I've always been close. Like, you know, 800. It's like, I just got to hit a thousand at least. Please God. He made my day. I honestly was like, oh, he's probably messing with it today. Kind of sick to my stomach. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to give you the heads up that I was going to do this because uh, I I, had, I left my house at like six o'clock this morning to get here, yeah. uh, and then like I just with all the interruptions and stuff, like people will come and want to hang out, and they're like, so I've been here for four hours and you've made one run, like this sucks. So like yeah. I didn't want to get your hopes up and have you all stressed out all day, so I figured I'd get to a point where I had some sort of news <laughs> to give you. <laughs> appreciate that because I was stressed out not even knowing it was there like oh god what, what could it be all right it might be all right it should be all right the only thing I haven't tried is the like the two-step 97.7 percent done okay uh, but other than that everything else is doing exactly what it's supposed to do uh, when I say it's been problem free I mean it's been uh the biggest problem the whole day is my computer needed a windows update uh <laughs> So like that's on me. That's not even on you. That's good to hear. I mean, I swear when I put that car together, it was like I just don't want any problems out of this car. Like yeah, this costs a little bit extra money to do this, but fuck it, we're doing it. Yeah, it's and I learned a few things that I'm an idiot. This is good news, man. You made my day. You yeah. Made my day. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, um, yeah, we'll call it good here on power. Uh, I'd like to keep. I'm gonna be here tomorrow. I'd like to keep it overnight so I can yeah. cold start it. Cool. I'll talk to you soon. It's actually been a ton of fun getting into just tune and not have to rebuild the entire car and troubleshoot 50 different things. I feel like I haven't had one go this smooth in a really long time. If you like these dyno tuning videos and you want to see what it looks like when something doesn't go quite as smooth as this one did, check out this video here.